I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. Many of you may have heard I've made the announcement that I am considering uh, seeking the office of the mayor of the city of New York in the November 2025, year 2025 election of the mayor of the city of New York. And I need to tell you uh, this, if you will, subject matter, that if I run for mayor of New York, it will be a righteous run. It will be the first of a righteous run. It will be the most welcome run for the office of the mayor of New York City that has ever been held in New York City's political history. Let me share a couple of things with you uh, that you may tend to agree with, whether you agree with me or whether you would agree to support me. First of all, I've not made the decision. I'm waiting on Almighty God uh, to give me the green light and to release me to do that. But in the event that you might decide to support or not support, let me tell you why you want to see a righteous run if not by me, then somebody who is righteous. Let me explain a couple of things to you that we have accepted um, as a humanity, as a people living in the 2024th year, the 21st century, that we have accepted a, a, a having leaders of our affairs leaders of our political and defenders of our nation is borders and shores by people who we have considered the lesser of two evils. Now listen to me as I proclaim, if I, James David Manning, run for the office of mayor of the city of New York, it will be a righteous run. Humanity, New Yorkers and Americans in general have accepted candidates who are the lesser of two evils. They have given up on a righteous, a tried, and a true, and a constitution. They've given up on John Adams. They've given up on Ben Franklin. They have given up on a Thomas Jefferson. They've given up on a, a George Washington. They have given up on an Abraham Lincoln type of a president. They, Americans have just given up and decided we'll take the lesser of two evils. But it wasn't always that way, my friends. It wasn't always that way. Now, when I get an opportunity and I have more time, I will tell you why the political election process has descended to the level of what it has descended to. But it wasn't always that way. It wasn't always that way with George Washington, with John Adams. It wasn't that way with Ben Franklin uh, and uh, all the congressional, I said Ben Franklin as president, not as president, but as congressional leaders, as founders and writers of the Constitution. It wasn't always the way it is now. How did we get from Thomas Jefferson? How did we get from Adams? How did we get uh, from Abraham Lincoln? to where we are now, how do we get, how do we fall so far from grace where it is passe to say we will accept the less, we'll vote for the lesser of two evils. And by the way, your estimation of who is the lesser of two evils is simply counter to what your opponent says about the lesser of two evils. They're both evil. And then ultimately what you're saying is that I'm going to vote for evil. I want to declare to you, should Almighty God release me, and his name is Jesus, should Almighty God release me, and his name is Jesus, to run for the office of the mayor of the city of New York, it will be a righteous run. It will be a righteous, not a lesser of two evils. You'll have righteousness or you'll have wickedness, and that will be your choice. And no matter what you may have thought about me in previous days or times gone by, when I express my platform to you, should God release me, and his name is Jesus, should God release me to run? You will understand, clearly, this is not a lesser of two evils. This is either the righteous run of James Manning or the wicked run of a person, let's say, for like Maya Wiley. And let me speak about her for just a moment. 
And, and let me give you a cameo of what goes on in every election, whether it be for dog catcher or for a school board director or for a congressperson or governor or senator or congregate, congregate, representative of Congress in America. It, it is always the same paradigm, no matter whether it's black or white or whether it's Republican or Democrat. It's always the lesser of two evils. But I suspect that my Wiley would be one of the persons that I would run, run against should I decide to launch my righteous run. She ran against Eric Adams and lost. I suppose she's teeing up to run again. Now here's what you will discover, and, and she's not the only one, but let me just go ahead and let you know now, uh, with my Wiley, you will looking at, be looking at a person who will be running who is anti-God. Maya Wiley is anti-God. She's anti-universal principles of, of the universe. She's in disagreement with the universe. She's anti-Bible. That's who she is. She's against the Bible, and she's pro-black revenge. Any person, I don't care if we're the Senator Warnock or whoever it is in Georgia, or whether it's Herschel Walker down in Georgia as well, any person running and identifying themselves black or running for black revenge. In other words, they want revenge from what happened with slavery, what happened with Africa, what has happened with black people, they want revenge. And they want the political, if you will, power to extract revenge from white people. Though they may be comrades or they're supported by white folks, Maya Wiley will be running as an anti-God. Listen to me. She's anti-God. She's anti-Bible. She's anti-universal truth, and she'll be running for black revenge. She'll be running for black revenge. The very style of her hair speaks that she is of a Rastafarian, if you will, pot smoking, if you must, violence against white people. That's what you, that's the, like the Jews that wear their yarmulke that demonstrate that they're under the covering of Almighty God. When the Jew put on his yarmulke, he puts on his yarmulke because he's under the authority of Almighty God. He is submitted to Almighty God. His head is covered by Almighty God and by Almighty God's word. But when you look at Maya Wiley, her hair and her head is a representative of black revenge against uh, for revolution. Her hairstyle represents she's anti-God, that she's anti-Bible. I, I know she's going to run, so I'm going to go ahead and get this out, or there will be others as well. But you have to understand why should we ask the church and for people of goodwill why should we ask Catholics or Jews to vote for someone who's anti-Bible? And let me finish by saying this. She's anti-universal truth. There's a truth that cannot be mitigated by any political power, by any gender of person, by any wealthy person coming or going. There's a universal truth that cannot be denied, however, that cannot be turned around, but it, will, it has been and recently become popular to deny universal truth. And that is to say the acceptance of homosexuality, which is against the universal truth. Everywhere you look in the universe, there's male and female, negative and positive. Whether you look at the atom and the, the build at the building blocks of humanity, or whether you look at the cows in the field, or you look at the sheep in the barn, or the goats in the barn, or the men and the women that are born, they're born under a universal principle. But Maya Wiley and a host of others are against that universal principle. Now they can't change it, but they call it homosexuality, which is a anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-universal. How can we have a fair, how can we have a constitutional leader? How can we expect 
to find justice if the persons that are the leader of our politics, spending of our money, collecting our taxes, mandating laws upon us, do not believe the Bible, do not believe there is a God, do not believe God's word, do not believe the universe. They just assume they say that the sun and the moon are the same that the sun and the moon have no distinctions, that they are the same, and that God created a non-distinct, that God created a homosexual. They lie on God. He never did that. God never did that. You've never seen a homosexual horse. You've never seen a homosexual goat. You've never seen a homosexual dog. Oh, wait, wait, hold it. Uh, the dog in the sense of an actual canine, no, but there are some human dogs. Let me clear that up. Let me assur assure you, that should. Almighty God, and his name is Jesus, release me. And I, I, I'm just, uh, I, 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 I want to state that I'm expressing those anti-God, anti-biblical, anti-universal truths. But no, I understand policy. I understand the economics. I understand the concerns. I understand what it will be to bring about a, a, a better New York, a better city, better opportunities, education opportunities, truth, and the justice, and in the courts. And I understand all of that. I understand the, the 1% that are robbing and paying and buying these uh, leaders paying for them lock, stock, and barrel. They don't represent the people. They represent the wealthy. Mayor Eric Adams is in more trouble than you can shake 10 sticks at with 1,000 people shaking sticks uh, because of the corruption and being bought off by the 1%, the wealthy of the wealthy, the billionaire class that the government is set up to protect them and to defend them against the poor people who knock on the door and say we want justice, but they never get it. They sleep in shelters or they live from paycheck to paycheck. They are threatened by prices that they can't control at the supermarket. This 1% one, this one sucks the blood out of the people, out of the masses of the people. Well, when I run for the righteous run, the righteous will rejoice and the wicked will mourn when I run. So if I run, I wanted to be able to make that clear, not to mention as policy the structure of gentrification the robbing of the community of Harlem, the banks and the banksters and Mellon Bank in particular and others that have stolen and created more homelessness in New York City than in the history of the world through a process called the tax lien law that has been pr promoted by New York City and the Mellon Bank and their structure of buying off the courts and the judges and the lawyers. All of this all of it, including the anti-God, the anti-Bible, the anti-universal principles, and more. Will James David Manning, once I sit down in the mayor's office at City Hall, it'll be a new day in the morning. Roger Whitaker will dig him up and bring him from across the pond to sing at the ordination installation ceremony. It'll be a new day in the morning when righteous Manning becomes righteous Mayor Manning of the city of New York. Stay tuned. There's more to be reported. I'm James David Manning. I'm the Lord's servant.